nene ua kea sa wila. Ua whanga fo'i le uu i le wā tea tea male atua. Mea ua awe le wha'a mua i a mangwao. A ua o nene ua kākou whei loa i luma o ngu'u. A e le o kuo u. This is my auntie Tu'u'u. I call her Auntie T. She's a Matai, a chief, specifically a Tula Fale, a talking chief. She'll tell you exactly what she thinks and feels. This is Mary, another Tula Fale, also an orator. She has three Tula Fale titles a quick talker, a wheeler and dealer. She hustles for her people. And this is me, Aruna. My journey? To find out more about my Samoan culture, specifically female Tula Fale, whom I like to call Salamasina's daughters. Okay, now let's begin by looking at the history of Samoa's chief system. Salamasina was the daughter of King Tui Aana. Nafanua, the goddess of war, bestowed her four royal titles. Tui Aana, Tui Atua, Vai Tumoasuali, Inga Tuaitele, and it started a new foundation for the chiefs of Samoa. The chiefs are called Matai, and they work within a chief system called Fa'amatai, and they are chosen by their families called Ainga. A Matai can be either a high chief called Ali'i, or an orator called Tula Fale. The Tula Fale speaks on behalf of the Ali and have set up powerful alliances through marriages. Traditionally, men were Tula Fale, but recently, the role has been given to women. During an event, a debate called Fa'atau may occur between the Tula Fale. They compete to see who's the best to speak on behalf of the guests. It can look like a heated argument, but it's a display of their extensive knowledge of their lineage and connections between the host and their genealogy. And the winner receives gifts as a sign of respect and acknowledgement, which they share with their ainga and community. I asked both Dr. Tuminoko of Unitec, who wrote a thesis on Samuel's chief system, and my uncle Pau, what they thought about female tulafali. There's an expectation that that Tula Fale titles aren't for women. And I think that's, that's entrenched in the psyche of, of the Fa Samoa, that, um, that it's probably okay for them to become a li'i matai, but um, it's not okay for them to become Tula Fale. The other is um, most probably the lack of a, a woman's ability to, to do oratory. <coughs> that's in no part their fault. Um, I think, it, as I said, it's entrenched in our Fatsa Moa. And the thing is, you know, when we look at the way the, the society is, is formed in Fatsa Moa, you are born and then you're put into groups. And so when we are placed in these, um, these groups, okay, you are then excluded from certain things. Auntie T lives with her extended family in Mangere, South Auckland, and she tells me when she wanted to be a Tula Fale. I came to New Zealand in 1963, and um, I am 73 years old. You take it off at school when you're hot, huh? I was in Samoa, and I wanted to be a, a Matai at a very young age. I've been to a lot of weddings, a lot of birthdays, and all I can see is Atula Fale standing up and speak on behalf of so many people. And it comes to me, why Atula Fale? And that makes me feel like, oh, I wanted to be Atula Fale. I wanted to get up and speak on behalf of everybody. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to get a matai as a tula fale. Shoes. Kuso, get Ava her shoes, please. Mine are manga. Yeah, 
And when I went there and they say to me, to La Po, come and do your makai. You serve the family well here, even though you're living in New Zealand. You turn your eyes to your family. When someone dies, you always come. You never miss. That's how a matai can look after her, his family. That's how a tula fale can serve the family, the ainga. I now realize that uh, the female tula fale is uh, accepted by the community, not afraid of the main tula fale, but they can stand up for themselves. Well, I think the ladies are catching up very quickly to the men's tula fan. The ladies, they speak from their hearts. The men, they will come and shake my hands and they will say, oh, that is very, very nice. You are very awesome. Yeah, that's all, but I know they were just telling me fibs. They will come and say, oh, she's just trying to be us. Yeah, they can come straight away when you finish your speech and sit down. They come and shake my hand, oh, you've done very well. Go, oh, oh. And I said, bullshit, you're just lying. You don't like my speech. Yeah, I, I stand up to them. I managed to catch Mary in her office, which is also in the heart of the Pacific Island hub, Mangere. And I asked her about being a Tula Fale and her organization, Epiphany Pacific Trust. I learned to be a Tula Fale like everything else you do in Fasamo is by watching and observing. So I grew up around my, great, my father, watching him day in, day out working at the church, working amongst his family, working in his community in terms of using his oratory, not just the oratory, but his leadership skills. I went along to Mary's one-week courses that she runs with Rupena Tanoa'i. They hold the Anganu'u 101 courses throughout New Zealand, Australia and Hawaii. These courses help people like myself, New Zealand-born Samoans, understand more about my culture. I'm one of the directors for Epiphany Pacific Trust, which is a small community-based trust, charitable trust that we run here in Auckland. 67% of our uh, Samoan population born outside of Samoa, they cannot access the other world because of language and not understanding the protocols and things. So the purpose of the trust is to help those people born outside of Samoa to be able to understand the culture, understand the nuances, understand the structure of it, and be able to participate within our culture because those are also the people that will take it to the next level, take it on to the next generations. Yeah, We've seen this particular piece bring out the best in some of the women that have done, you know, because that's who we are. Uh, express yourself, so it's up to you, really, and it's volume, we need volume, we need expression to add uh, emphasis to the words that you're saying. Uwafata lunga, uwafata lalo. Wale ole lea lau te unga, lau te unga fatupu, te unga fatamali. Se sao, sao, sao farale chu! Look at those stars waving on the flag. I 
I went to have coffee with two other female chiefs, not Tula Fale, but Ali, the decision makers, and asked if they had made a difference with their titles. As soon as I became a Matai, I felt like my opinion mattered. Uh, you know, they'll give me an opportunity to say how, what I feel about this, what do I think about this. Yeah. Um, but to be honest, uh, for my age, I'm, I'm 27. Yeah. Um, not, not much 27 year olds are uh, Matais, yeah. Yeah. but I feel like it's a beginning. Hardly. Yeah, yeah, hardly ever, but I feel like it's a beginning for something very beautiful, especially for my generation. So, you know, when you see a male talk as well, like it's real, it's what we've been brought up. It's, you know, a chief, when you think of chief, you think, you think of male. male figure. Yeah. So when I see like a female orator, I feel very empowered. So to me, the difference is that with being given a title, I have an expectation, there is an expectation that I will serve my family. When you're saying serving, what does that mean? Serving is serving. Like, <laughs> <okay>. Sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> serving is uh, doing what is right for you and for your family. Being a woman Matai, is not an easy task. Being a woman shouldn't be the thing that stops you from being a leader yeah. and being influential yeah. for good reasons. Yes. Yeah. What kind of woman? You know, I don't know how to say this politely, but you got you got to have balls. Eh? You got to have balls to do this job because it's it's predominantly male that that have the role of tulafale. But I think that as long as the focus is just about the oratory, then not many of our women will take up the, the mantle. But if, if they understand that the focus is about leadership and how we, how we work with our families, then I'll see a lot more women doing that because we have the natural leadership, organisational leadership that it takes to run a family. You know, watching these students graduate, I really felt the emotions and the significance and importance of reconnecting with your culture. E maukulonga loko e upunga ke kaukala ai e malosi fo a otua atu o lenga malosi i a mauai le me mo. No one is going to give you confidence. You have to take confidence for yourself. And I just want to say to our, you know, come and be part of it. And sometimes it's lonely out there, hey? and sometimes it's, um, it's ugly out there, but that's all we can do is just reach out to each other and just say, keep going. This may be the famous question, but what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be the first New Zealand Samoan Minister. I know it's going to be a long way to go, but I really want to be one because I want to inspire all the younger generation to, you know, just keep up with the culture, learn our little and the tradition. My name is Benelope Ina Tanbasa and I recently turned 12. Thank you.